What's up, booktube? It's Monty again, back again today to talk to you guys about another book. We're doing another book discussion, and today we're talking about Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I'm trying to hold it at like an angle so you can still see the cover. We don't get weird lights. Um, so, just a brief synopsis. This is a book that's set in a fictionalized West African country. Um, there is magic. There is actually stop here. Uh, the synopsis is the magic is gone thanks to our ruler of Arisha and the novel is about going on a quest to get the magic back and all the things that going on a quest involves what you have to do that kind of thing is very much a YA fantasy adventure novel. If you're a fan of YA fantasy at all I think you'll like this book. If you're a fan of fantasy at all I think you'll like this book. If you are a fan of great world building I think you will like this book. If you're a fan of well thought out magic systems I think you will like this book. Now when I was reading Children of Blood and Bone it was giving me very much an Avatar The Last Airbender vibes with black people so I was all here for it. All here like it that was sort of the vibe that I personally got. It was definitely giving me more Avatar vibes than like Harry Potter vibes. That's just me personally. So we have the book is told in three perspectives. We have our main character, uh, Zeely, not Zeely, Zaley. We have our main character Zaley, who is a magi. No, she's not. She's a diviner because the magi's are you know gone thanks to King Saron or whatever. We have her. She is a young person. She's been like trained to fight her whole life. Not her whole. Well most of her life at this point. Uh, we have the prince of the country, Anon, gets perspective in the book, <clears throat> who is very much trying to be like his father and to be strong and to cast out, the, you know, these terrible diviner people because they might uprise and try to kill everybody at some point, maybe, I don't know. And then we have my personal favorite character, Amari, who is the princess who runs away at the beginning of the book and sort of sparks the adventure aspect of the novel. Now, I will say that I think the this first book is mainly about Amari's growth as a character and not so much Zaley's growth as a character. And personally, I appreciated that because when I went into the book, I was expecting it to be Zaley's story. Zaley is a person who gets talked about on the inside flap the most. She's, you know, the first character we're introduced to, I believe. Uh, let's find out. I'll take, yeah. She's the first character we're introduced to, so I very much thought this was going to be Zaley's story. And so when I was reading it and Amari was the character who had the better arc in my opinion, I was so happy. Because at the beginning of the book, Amari is very much the standard princess who isn't so much like a warrior. She's not there to fight anybody. She just wants to like, she wants to help out the diviner kids because she doesn't, what, her best friend growing up at the palace was one of the diviners. And so at the beginning of the novel, we see, we're just going to go into spoilers. So if you haven't read the book, definitely recommend it. It's beautiful. It's great. It has great representation. The story is great. Like I said, if you're a fan of all of fantasy, at all a fan, there is something in this book for you. It does everything. That, like there's, this book is 500 pages, but the story is always getting pushed forward. There was nowhere in the novel where I was like, man, I wish I could skip ahead a little bit. Like, no, there is always something happening. It's 500 pages but I read it in like three days so I definitely recommend it go read it we're gonna talk about some spoilers at the beginning of the book we have Amari witness her father kill one of the diviners because one of the artifacts he thought had been destroyed wasn't destroyed and so if any of the diviner children touch it then their magic is sparked again and he does not want that because he does not want the magis to come back at all so the plot of the book is so much of, you know, getting the magic to come back to the country. And so when she sees that, she's like, you know what? Nah, fam, I'm Gucci. And so she manages to steal the scroll and run away. And that's how she and Zaylee meet up. And then we go on a quest for sort of the magic. Um, her brother is very much the opposite of Amari. He's very much, yo, I don't want magic to come back. Magic is evil magic killed my father's family like magic is no bueno and so part of the novel is Anon struggling with the fact 
that he is somehow able to do magic, which wasn't something he had known before this novel. And even when I was reading the novel, I was just something I kind of had an issue with because the magic users in this world are described as having darker skin than everyone else. So there, there's an element of colorism that gets played into, an element of prejudice that gets played into. A lot of these heavier topics that other YA books try to address in my opinion, but they always sort of fall flat, fall, like they just don't work out. They work out here beautifully. And so we have a commentary on colorism, we have a commentary on oppression, we have a commentary on these heavy issues. Excuse me, that is really well done. The magic users are described as having darker skin and white hair, and Anon doesn't have that. Anon is very much lighter, and he does not have white hair. He has black hair. Um, at some point, his hair does start to turn white because he is using magic, and so you do get to see that symptom of it. And you know, he is the prince, and in the beginning of the novel, it is talked about how the royal family did used to be able to do magic, but then the gods turned against them, and so that also plays again into why you can believe that, you know, the King Saran or whatever isn't Magic's greatest, like, fan. Like, he's like, nah, fam, like, I'm Gucci, we don't want your magic. And so he has to struggle with the fact that he knows that if his father ever finds out that he can do magic, his father will kill him. And so <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of that going on with him struggling with that trying to keep that a secret from the rest of the king's guard while they hunt down his sister and Zaylee and her brother uh, Zane on this magical quest and I have to say that there was a romance in this book that I was not a fan of Anon and Zaylee have this weird sort of almost insta lovey thing that I know has turned a lot of readers off of the book and I have to say that I really wish it didn't because it almost turned me off because it did come out of nowhere it did make no sense there was a moment in the book where they were having sex and I was like this sex scene just came out of nowhere completely left field and I don't even think it was like real physical sex I think it was because part of Zane's ma not Zane part of Anon's magic is like he can meet Zaylee in like this weird dream world and so part of it was like in this dream world they were having sex which was weird and I was like why are we doing this but I really honestly feel and they were setting up this like weird like paro duo thing uh Anon and Zaylee and then Zaylee's brother Zane and Amari and I was like I'm not here for Amari and Zane because I really think that the real love story in this book is between Amari and Zaylee hands down, make Princess and the Warrior a real thing because that was, in my opinion, the actual love story that was going on in this book. They had that emotional connection that the other pairings didn't have. And also, at the end of the book, Zayn and, Zayn and Zaylee and Amari are all proven right because they all keep trying to tell Anon, like, yo, your father will kill you if he finds out. And so when his father finds out when he kills Anon, I was like, thank you, that means we're done with this foolishness, because it was foolishness to believe that you were ever going to get with Zaylee, because that was no chemistry there, just no chemistry. And But at the end of the book, what I thought was, what really threw, please don't fall, what really made me happy was at the end of the book, when Amari's hair cracked, and the gods blessed her with magic, and Zaylee didn't have it. And I was like, I don't know how we're gonna go now, like where we're gonna go from here, because I, I don't wanna live in a world where Zaylee isn't a, a reaper, but I also really think that Amari deserves the magic. So I'm just like, I was so torn. I was torn, I was torn, but it was beautiful. Um, I really don't have anything negative to say about this book other than that, uh, other than that romance between Anon and Zaylee, because it does come out of nowhere, it never makes sense, and I was happy when it was sort of, it was killed off in the middle of it. So overall, this is the 500 pages of pure amazingness that everyone should definitely read. If you have read this book, let me know what you thought down in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys again in my next video, but until then, bye.